Oh yeah. This is what I love about living right here. Constantly. Constantly. What is up guys? Welcome back to another one. And today I'm bringing you the lonely snow goose clip. Now I had to censor it out a little bit just with some bleeps and beeps but it turned out really good still and I hope you guys enjoy this. Following that we're going to dive into some heavy scouting where we go find a butt ton of birds later in the video but real quick I want to let you guys know we are doing 10 days of Christmas here at Ducks and it starts today with 25% off the Cup Ducks hoodie. So every day from now, the next 10 days, we're going to be doing 25% off something. Hats, hoodies, shirts, decals, who knows. To stay up to date with what day we're doing what, go follow myself and Ducks Waterfowl over at Instagram to keep up to date every single day so you guys know what is discounted each day of the 10 day sale. It's one of our ways that we can contribute and give back and welcome in the holidays by giving you guys some awesome discounts. But with no further ado, check out the snow goose clip. Enjoy guys. No way you can pick that out. Oh, there you go. There you go. Hit him, shoot the mother The snow on the ground, snow goose. Right there. God damn. You gotta talk. You can't just say shoot him. Oh, I said right, right there, shoot him. On the right. You want me to say else? God damn. Walk out there and point at it. Yo, yo, yo. Today I'm gonna show you guys some of my top tips to scouting ducks and geese. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I've had a ton of comments down in the comment section below of a lot of you beginners, you know, and a lot of you DMing me on Instagram asking, Bobby, this is my first year goose hunting, you got me into it, now teach me how to freaking scout because I don't know, man. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to, we're going to go out, we're going to drive, we're going to go find a big feed of birds and I'm going to explain to you guys how it's easier to scout geese and I'm going to tell you some of my top tips and tactics how to find these birds birds but first look at this bad boy right here for all you pheasant hunters deer hunters turkey hunters that need to wear an orange hat we have them available on the website go check the description below i will link them it's about 7 45 so i know the birds are just now getting up and they're just now moving to their feed so we're going to go try to meet them and see if we can link up with them and see where they're at Back seat, I know you're a <laughs> Yep, Bobby's an idiot, but uh, you know what? You just gotta have fun. Have fun freaking loosen up, man. But anyways, we're getting this day started out jamming like always. Got the tunes cranked up. So guys, my first bit of advice for all of you out there, and it should be kind of kind of a blanketed deal. It should be the same for all you guys like it is myself. We have a bunch of old, you know, sand pits that aren't being used anymore that are now privately owned. And we have a lot of large scale sand pits that are still in business, pumping sand out and doing the dang thing. But those sand pits are along a highway, and they're along a highway because that's where the business set up at one time for easy access. Well, what is good is, as a lot of you know and see highway ponds, you know, the uh, the ponds that are next to highways that they, they dig out and use the dirt for overpasses and stuff, you'll see that a lot of those ponds are really loaded up with birds every year. They always have birds. Well, it's the same kind of thing with the sand pits. It's something about highways. Highways, I don't know, I, I don't like to say this, I think it's a long shot, but I think, I feel like there's some truth to it, I don't know, but it's like migration and big flight, big, big flocks of geese follow highways and they stop along those ponds and if there's a sand pit along the way, well, they stop there too because it's bigger and they end up roosting there for some time. Doesn't look like the geese have got up yet because this is the field where they should be going. This is the field that I've been scouting. 
doesn't look like the geese have got up yet. This is the field that we'll be scouting today. This is where they should be going. If they switched up in literally one day, because there was seriously 6,000 birds here yesterday, we're gonna wait it out. I'm sure they haven't got up yet. We're gonna go by the roost, the sand pit, and see if they are there or not. But first, quick main tips. Find your roost. Yes, it's easy to go out in the country and find flight lines and follow them and find feeds way out in the country, but you can do that. That's a lot of driving. You follow birds a bunch. That's the raw, raw, raw hard scouting is just going out in the country, following big flocks of birds and seeing where they land. A little cheat, a little hack is find big roosts. So big bodies of water that hold ducks and geese overnight, you know, nightly, and when they get off of there, that's when you follow them because early season, they shouldn't be flying too far. The early season birds, like we've had a huge push, huge, huge push of early season birds. We are loaded up and these birds don't want to travel very far to go eat. They want to get off the roost, go eat and go right back to it. They don't know the area well, so they're feeding extremely close to these big bodies of water where they're sitting during the night time. Well, there they are. Look at that. Holy cow, that's a lot of birds. Look at all them birds behind me. Holy cow, that is a ton. Seeing a big wad of birds like this is just, they're loud, that's all you hear. It's windy right now, I'm sure you guys are hearing a lot of wind, but when you get sitting under all them birds, I, I tell you what, you get addicted quick. So now we're gonna go follow them. Looks like they're switching up fields just a little bit, so we wanna go see exactly where they're sitting. Ugh, shut up. That's another tip is when you find these birds, you want to sit exactly where they're sitting in that field. You don't want to, what, one thing is easy to do is hunt out of tree rows. And we've done it a bunch. We've had some success at it, but at any point, if you can sit in the middle of a field like the birds are doing, that's key. Birds rarely feed up against a tree row. Tree rows have predators in them, they have coyotes in them and all that, and geese know it. They just won't want to land that close to tree rows. I've hunted a lot of tree rows. You guys have seen the videos, but all I'm saying is if you can hide out in the middle of a field, do that. Quick rundown, just to remind you guys. Tip number one, find a big roost. Tip number two, wait till the birds get off that big roost and follow them in your vehicle. <clears throat> well, we found the field they're on. They are real jumpy today. They just jumped up yet again. Oh, that's a lot of birds. So tip number three, find your field where they're landing and see where they're sitting in that field. Sit exactly where they are sitting. Listen to that, they are loud. Now, this is a green winter wheat field like you see. Hard hiding in the middle of a green winter wheat field. The only things you can really do for layout blinds is find a, uh, you know, a pole that the farmer had to cut around and there's some tall stubble or get up in the tree row. It's hard to hide in green winter wheat. The, the most effective way that I found is like that last hunt, uh, laying in white painter suits with a bunch of snow decoys. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Cupped up, comfortable, not flaring, just wanting to get a bite. Holy, holy moly, look at them. Cupped up from the heavens, just dropping in. Goodness. Man, no geese, but... We do have a few pigeons. But guys, I'm gonna do some more driving around. I know this wasn't a long video, but I wanted to make it informative. And one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is find 
your roost. Do not hunt that roost. Don't hunt that body of water. If you have one roost that's holding, you know, a thousand birds in your area, like a lot of you probably do, don't get permission and go hunt that roost because if that's your only roost and you blow them off of there, they're not going to come back maybe all season, <clears throat> at least for a couple weeks. But you need to use that roost like a tool. Let them go sit on it at night, let them go roost on it at night, and then hunt the fields that they're getting off of that and going to to feed. Hunt the fields, don't hunt the roost. But most of all guys, be safe in the field. Always be safe in the field. Gun safety is number one here on the channel. I don't preach it enough in the hunts. I know I have in a bunch of how-tos before, but that is our number one goal is to be safe in the field. I know that sounds repetitive. I know you guys have heard that a bunch and I sound boring and dumb for saying it, but I truly mean it. Accidents can happen extremely easily. But if you have any questions regarding scouting in your area, if you're struggling with something, leave it down below. I'm always replying to all of your good comments. If it's a positive comment, if it's a great question, I'm always replying. So drop it down below, I will reply to you. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked them. And subscribe if you haven't. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. Yeah. Guala, 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 guala. I'm living like it's not tomorrow. Don't know my style, won't let you borrow You're thirsty, have a glass of water I'm killing these beasts, I'll be more dead I put my